Okay, so last section we're going to look at this week uh, is 2.1, and it kind of picks off, picks up with what we left off with yesterday. We talked a little bit about um, zeros or roots, and I gave you guys a formula you could use. It was b squared minus 4ac, and that works to tell you how many times a quadratic could cross the x-axis. Well, now we're going to talk about zeros or roots in general, and I'm going to show you a way that the calculator... I think I showed you a little yesterday, but I'm going to review again how you can find zeros or roots on the calculator. So let's graph this. So 2x cubed. If you've got anything else in there, just, just get rid of it. Okay, so 2x cubed. Make sure you get out of the exponent after you do the 3. Minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, I'm going to do zoom 6, and I'm going to see what I got. Okay, so first of all, that is a good window. Uh, we know that, or we'll, we'll learn eventually, that cubic functions means the highest exponent is a 3. And that's the most number of times it can cross the x-axis, and I can see all three of them right there. Now the three isn't a guarantee that it crosses three times. It's more like a, at most, it could cross three times. It is possible it only crosses once or twice. In this case, we do get all three. If it only crossed once, would the other two be uh, like imaginary solutions? They, um, they could be imaginary or they could be the same answer with what's called a repeated root. So I could, well, I'm not going to talk too much about that right now, but it could be what's called a triple repeated root, or one real and two imaginary answers. Um, could be either way. All right, so let's look at that. And the first question I have about it is, how many times does it cross the x-axis? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, how many times? Three times. Yeah, it's going to cross three times. So it does cross um, three times. Now, I'm going to graph something else. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing, and then I'll graph something else. Let me ask you this question first. Um, what's the y-coordinate? Like, if you were to tell me either that point, that point, or that point, you gave me the coordinate. The y value of all of them would be the same. What's the y value anywhere that a graph crosses the x-axis? Zero. Yeah, it's always zero. Yep. Yeah. Because if you're crossing the x-axis, that means you haven't gone up or down. You're right on the x-axis. So it's the y value is always zero. Now, let's graph that. x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 times x minus 2. Don't get rid of what you have in there already. Just leave that. And put this below. Uh, you do need the parentheses. So 2x minus 1 and x minus 2. Now I want you to watch what happens when you hit graph. Because if you left the other one there, you're going to notice something. So there's the original one. Here's the new one I just typed in. Okay, what do you notice? Yeah? They're the same graph. They look like the same kind of graph. Um, drawing something on the calculator never proves anything. Okay, just to make that clear. Two things could look really, really similar, but then you zoom in and they're a little bit different. All right? So drawing on the screen is never a proof of anything. Um, in this case, I will tell you, though, that these two are similar. And in fact, they're exactly the same. And the way you could show that that is exactly the same as what you have up there is if you did this out. Okay, so let's, let's do that out. And you'll see it comes out the same. 
What's x times 2x? 2x squared. Yeah. Hmm? Yep, yep, 2x squared. And then x times negative 1 gives me negative 1x. Negative 1x. And then 2x times 1, well, that's just 2x. And 1 times negative 1? Negative 1. Okay, combine your like terms. What's negative x plus 2x? So x. And that's what you get when you multiply the first two together. We still have the last one. x minus 2. Okay, let's multiply those together and see what happens. Okay, 2x squared times x. What's that get me? 2x cubed. So we get 2x cubed and then 2x squared times negative 2. Minus 4x squared. Minus 4x squared. Good. Now do the x. x times x. x squared. x squared. Okay. x times negative 2. Two. Two. Negative 2x. Two x. And finish up with the negative 1. What's negative 1 times x? Negative x. And negative 1 times negative 2. Positive 2. Let's combine all that together. 2x um, cubed. Okay, so we got that. Negative 4x squared plus 1x squared. Negative 3x squared. Okay, so we got that. We got that. Uh, negative 2x minus 1x. Negative 3x. And then plus 2. So if we look at what's in that box and we compare it to what's right here, are they the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. That proves it. Okay. So that they are exactly the same thing. Yep. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm going to come back to why I wrote it this way. Why would I write it with these sets of parentheses? This is called factor. Why, why would I factor it? Well, let's look at the next question, and I think that'll explain why writing it with the three sets of parentheses is better than writing 2x cubed minus 3x squared and all that stuff. So we saw this yesterday. I want you to find the numbers that you can plug in for x that give you an answer of 0 for y. What do we, what do we call those numbers again? Numbers that you can plug into an equation and the answer comes out to 0. Those are called roots. roots. Yep. Or they're also called zeros. zeros. Yep. So that this is asking you to find the roots or find the zeros. Well, to find the, the zeros, did we talk about second calc zero yesterday? No. No? So if you press second calc and you pick the second option down, which is zero. It's going to ask you three questions. First thing it says is pick a point that is somewhere to the left of where you think it crosses the x-axis. Now it crosses three times. You have to do this three separate times. Okay. Let's do the one all the way on the left. Pick a point that you know is to the left. Hit enter. Pick a point that you know is to the right. Hit enter. And now it's going to look between those dotted lines to find where it crosses. So put your guess you know, pretty close. Hit enter. And it tells me that the first root, I can't read it that well, but it says x equals negative 1. That's the first root. All right, let's do, let's do the other two. I wish we could do all three at the same time. There's the first one, x equals negative 1. Let's do second calc 0. 
pick a point to the left, hit enter, go to the right, hit enter, and move your cursor pretty close to the guess. For, for the guess, move it pretty close. Okay. And there is a second answer at point five. Now let's get the third one. Second, calc, zero. To the left, to the right, and do your guess. And the last answer is at two. Those are the three roots in this problem. Now, let's scroll back up to what I had written in parentheses and see, I'll just write these numbers bigger so you can read them. X equals negative one. X equals a half. X equals two. Let's go back up to how we wrote it in parentheses. Does anyone see a connection between the three numbers that we just wrote down and what's up in the parentheses? Is it? They're all what you need to put in x to make it zero? Yeah, they're all the numbers you plug in for x to make it zero. If you plug in negative one right here, negative one plus one is zero. If you plug in one half in the middle one, two times a half is one, one minus one is zero. If you plug in two to the last one, two minus two is zero. So they are the three numbers that make each of those factors zero. It's very easy to get these numbers if you write your problem factored. If you foil it out and you look at what I just put a box around, it's a lot harder to figure out the zeros. I mean, how, how would you guess that one half is going to make that zero? Okay, you're not. So eventually we'll talk a little bit more about how do you take something like that and factor it? How, how do you do that? But for now, we're going to focus on using the um, calculator if the roots are more complicated, and we'll find them just like that. Roots don't always come out to nice numbers. Okay, In this case, they did. But sometimes they don't. So is there any questions why there's three different answers there? So, in that last problem, negative 1, 1 half, and 2 are the roots. So let's go with negative 1 for a second. If negative 1 is a solution to that equation, then that means if you write negative 1 comma 0, that's the coordinate of the y-intercept. So not only are these three numbers the roots, there are also the x values if you want to write the coordinate of the y-intercept. Negative 1 comma 0, 1 half comma 0, 2 comma 0. Those, are the, those give you the y-intercepts. Uh, x-intercepts, I'm sorry, x-intercept, not y-intercept. So if I ask you to find the roots, if I ask you to find the zeros, it's exactly the same thing. If I ask you to find the x-intercept, well, it's almost the same thing. You're just putting that number, comma, zero, and writing it as a coordinate. But very, very similar idea. Roots, intercepts, and zeros. Some older graphing calculators, if you do second calc, it actually does say um, root right there instead of zero. Uh, my calculators all say zero, um, but different ones might say root. So, any question on the idea of what a what a root is, what a zero is, what an x-intercept is? Okay. So, let's look at this one. Uh, linear. So we're going to take a step back and look at something a little simpler. 
When you draw something that's linear, um, what shape is it? It's a line, right? Linear means it's a line. Now, usually when you write a line, it's like y equals mx plus b. Uh, in this case, I'm doing ax plus b. It's the same thing. If you wanted to solve this and find the root, well, the first thing you do is you set it equal to 0, and then you get x by itself. What would be the two steps you'd have to do to get that variable alone on the left side? Yeah. Subtract b and then divide a. Subtract b and then divide by a. So if you have a linear equation like 3x plus 5 equals 0, and you want to quickly find the root, well, it's just the opposite of that number divided by that number negative five thirds. And what you're really doing is just getting the x by itself. Okay, let's try an example here. So here's a, a linear equation, 2x plus 3 equals 0. That's your a, that's your b. So what would be the root of that equation? Negative 3 over 2. Yeah, negative 3 over 2. You minus the 3, so it's the opposite of that number, and then you divide by that number. So negative 3 over 2. You could also write negative 1.5. Questions on that? All right, now, can a linear equation that's not horizontal across the x-axis more than once. Christian, what do you think? No. No. Because if you draw it in line, no matter how you draw it, it's vertical, I said not horizontal, vertical or on an angle, it can only cross the x-axis one time. So with linear equations, you only need to worry about one root. What type of equation is the next step up from linear? You studied, you studied these yesterday, yeah? Quadratics. A quadratic. So quadratic equations, a little more complicated than linear, ax squared plus bx plus c. How many zeros, how many roots, how many x-intercepts? All the same question. Can a quadratic have? Yeah, two. Could have up to two. Is there any other number of roots it could have besides just two? Yeah. Could have one, yeah. Or zero. Or zero. Yeah. Could have zero, zero, one, or two. Think of all the different ways you could draw a parabola. You could draw it like that, it never crosses. You could draw it. Something like that it comes down, it just touches it and goes back up. That's one. And then two would look like that. And you could flip those over too. But. Now, remember what we talked about yesterday with the discriminant. That's the b squared minus 4ac. The part under the square root in the quadratic formula, that's called the discriminant. I don't know if we already knew that or not, but that's the name of it. There's three different things that can happen. Zero, one, or two solutions. If the discriminant comes out to a negative number, you don't get any solutions. If it comes out to exactly zero, you get one solution. If it comes out positive, you get two solutions. Okay? And I think we, we wrote that down at the very end. It was the last thing we wrote down in class yesterday. Yeah. Is there any questions on that idea of how the discriminant tells you how many roots you have? Yeah? I have a question about something else. Um, it's quadratics. I don't remember if it's a function or not, but when the quadratic is uh, facing left or right. So when it faces left or right, um, we're not dealing with a 
function anymore. Um, and it would you wouldn't be able to write it in this format if it faced left or right. So it wouldn't technically be considered a quadratic anymore. Yeah. Quadratics can either be a parabola that faces up or opens up or opens down. Opening left and right wouldn't be quadratic. Okay, let's try this one. So it says to solve, but it says approximately. Well, if it didn't say approximately, what can we use to solve an equation exact where the highest exponent is a 2? What formula can you use? Yeah? Quadratic formula. Right. You could do quadratic formula, and that would give you the exact answer, like 2 plus or minus square root 3 over 7. Okay, something like that. But this doesn't say it wants an exact answer. Approximate is okay. And the graphing calculator can give you an approximate answer. It can't give you the exact, but it will give you approximate. All right, we're going to solve for the roots. Uh, generally, what do we get an equation equal to when we're trying to solve for roots? Yeah, we want to get it equal to zero. So there's two ways you can get it equal to zero. Either put everything on the right or put everything on the left. It won't change the answer to the zeros. You'll get the same answer either way. Picture might look a little different, but the answer will, will not be. Uh, so Jane, how do you want to do it? You want to put everything on the left side or you want to put everything on the right side? Put everything on the left side. Okay. So um, if you moved everything to the left side, what would you have <coughs> over there? 2x um, minus, or 2x plus 2x minus 1. So, yeah, you're going to have a plus 2x and then a minus, and then a minus 1. Yep. So you add the 2x and then subtract the 1. Okay. Now let's, let's grab it. So we've got um, clear out anything else we got in there. Two x squared plus two x minus one. Okay. So my first question is, how many zeros does this equation have? Yep. Two. Yep. It has two. So um, can somebody remind me what are the buttons that I press? to find the two zeros. I gotta do one at a time. I'll do the one on the left, someone else can do the one on the right. Uh, that would be helpful. So yep. second calc. Second calc, yep. You go down to zero. Go down to zero, yep. Okay. And then you use the arrows to figure out, like, minimize the point at which you want to select your point on the x-axis. So like, you would use the arrows to Go left bound or right bound. <laughs> yep. So we got to kind of pin in where we're looking for the zero. Yeah. So we're going to say it's between here and there. Yeah. And then you go close, as close as you can to the uh, x axis and then select your point. Yep. So we go pretty close <laughs> to the x axis. And then once we do that, we're going to, they ask us for the guess. Okay. We hit enter. And we can see this time we don't get a nice answer. Okay, we get negative 1.37. So that means if we were to try to solve this with quadratic formula, uh, it probably has a square root in it. That's not a nice number. Okay. So we get negative 1.37. We'll call that x1 and then x2 would be that root over there. Um, does anyone have the second root? Yep. Yeah. Uh, 0.366. 0 0.366. So I'm going to say 67 then. I'm just going to round it to two decimal places. Um, on the test, it'll say where to round. So if you're not sure, you can always ask. Uh, but in general, 
uh, two decimal places is pretty good. Sometimes we do three, but I'd say two is pretty, pretty normal. Any questions on that? Okay. So there's our roots. All right. Um, so finding roots graphically, let's kind of write down what we've been doing. So you press second, and then calc, and then you choose option, which option is it, two? Is that the, yep, so option number two. And then you got to pick a left bound. I think on some calculators it used to say, I thought it used to say like lower value, and then upper bound they used to say higher value. But now they say left bound, right bound, and then you do the guess. And you hit enter after each one. So those are pretty much the steps to finding a root graphically. Now, if you use a different model calculator, uh, it could be a little bit different. Um, but if you're using a TI-83, TI-84, it'll follow those steps. Any questions on the steps I just wrote? Okay, let's try this one. It says again to solve approximately. Uh, we couldn't even solve this with the quadratic formula if we wanted to. Um, why not? Like, why couldn't you use quadratic formula on that? Yeah, it's a cubic. It's a cubic, it's not quadratic. The highest exponent is a three. Uh, is there a formula for cubics? Like we have quadratic formula, is there a cubic formula? Yep, there is a cubic formula. Um, it gets quite a bit more complicated than the quadratic formula. It's, it's not awful, but it's, it's a lot more work. Um, so we don't actually learn it. And there's even a formula for quartic, I believe, which is a fourth degree. Um, at that point, it becomes a ton more work. I think the formula is like a page long. It's, it's really big. Um, so quadratic is the highest formula that we generally learn in high school. All right. Um, so we've got this cubic. Uh, all right. So we want to first get it set up so it's ready to plug in. Is that ready to plug in the way it's written? Nope, what do we want to do first? Isaiah, move everything to one side? Yep, we'll move everything to one side. And Alex, how do you want to move everything to one side? Uh, minus one to both sides. Yep, I'd say that would be the easiest way. Notice you're missing the square term, that's fine. There's no rule that says you have to have every single term. You've got the cube term, missing the square term, linear term, constant term. It's still a cubic. Now, earlier I said a cubic can cross the axis how many up to how many times? Three. Three. It's not a guarantee that it's going to cross three times. Just like when it's a quadratic, it's not guaranteed it crosses twice. It might only cross once. One thing that an odd, when your highest exponent is an odd number, one thing that can never happen is have it miss the axis. It never will. When your exponent is an odd number, you are guaranteed to hit the x-axis once. Always. So let's hit graph. And this time, it's a cubic, but we only hit the axis one time. So cubics can kind of go like this and start to turn back on themselves. That's how you can get three. 
Or sometimes a cubic starts to try to turn, never really turns, and it just kind of keeps going on its way. And that's what this one does. So what, what does that mean about the um, answers? Well, uh, it could mean that we have what's called a repeated root three times. Or we have one real answer, and there are two imaginary. We could look into that and try to figure it out. Um, that's not really the goal right now. We're just going to solve for the roots. Um, so, Raina, can you remind me again? What do I press? Um, second, count, and then two. And then two. Pick a point to the left. Pick a point to the right. Do your zero. And again, it's not a very nice answer. Um, that is the root 0.45. Any questions on how I got 0.45? Yeah. The left bound and the right bound? Um, it's pretty random. I'll probably do it a little different every time. I just make sure that I know that I'm somewhere. There's the root. I want to make sure that I'm somewhere definitely to the left of it and hit enter. So it puts a vertical line wherever my point is. And then move your point somewhere that's definitely to the right of it, and it'll put a vertical line over there. And then the guess really doesn't matter. You can actually just hit enter. Um, let's see if it gives me the same answer, though. Sometimes when you start to get out like seven, eight, nine decimal places, if you change your left and your right bound a little bit, you get a little bit different answer. Not, not a lot, but a little bit. Um, in this case, I did not. I got exactly the same thing. So this type of problem, it might not do that. But I, I think we did one, uh, it was the one where we did the projectile motion, and I had you calculate it was like the time, and it was two seconds, and some people got like 1.99999, and other people got like 2.000001. So it did happen in that, but not in this one. Um, would it be a function? If this? You, oh, yeah. If you had a horizontal line, and it starts curving, like you said on the um, cubic root, starts curving. Maybe even if you say it wants to, it makes the complete curve or goes into another horizontal line. Like something like this? Uh, but perfect, yeah, perfectly like that, just perfectly horizontal. Would that, if it was above the x axis, still be a cubic root because it's not hitting the x axis? Um, well, this particular shape wouldn't be really characteristic of a cubic. Cubics have what's called a certain end behavior to them. And on the left side of a cubic and on the right side of a cubic, they're always opposite end behavior. So one end always goes down, one end always goes up. That can be flipped. It can go this way. That's the reverse. So this side, the left side is down and the right side is up. If a function starts to level out and be horizontal and not really be going up and down a lot, that wouldn't be characteristic of a cubic. We do have a function that looks like that. It's a trig function. Um, it's, um, it's the inverse tangent function. If you graph that under a trig window, I think it looks kind of like what you were saying. but it's not a cubic. That's the closest function I can think of that looks like what you said. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this side. We will study trig functions much, 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 much later on. Okay. Right. Any questions on how we got point um, four or five is the answer? Okay, so a little bit about third degree polynomials. That's linear, like mx plus b, or whatever letters you want to use, cx plus d. That's quadratic. 
and then when you add in that term in the front, that makes it cubic. So I already pretty much showed you this, but there are different types of cubics. Sometimes they curve on themselves in the middle. Sometimes they try to start to curve and they never really do, and they just keep continuing. But they always look pretty much like one of those four types of graphs. Um, the term can be, can be steeper, like if you, you know, could do something more like this. That's fine. It doesn't necessarily have to be symmetrical, like the distance from here to here and then here to here. <laughs> but that's the general behavior of a cubic. So any questions on what cubics look like? So hopefully you get a good idea now of what a parabola, what a what a quadratic looks like. It's a parabola, U shape, and cubics look something like this. Now if you go up one more exponent to like a to a four, well every time you go up an exponent, you have the potential to add another term on the graph. So if you had something with a four, it could have a W shape to it. Could have one more term. And if you drew it, it could cross the x-axis four times. Okay, but the highest we're going to look at for now is a three. All right, so let's look at this one. Uh, the first question here is how many solutions does this equation have? So let's just think about cubics for a second. What's the most number of solutions a cubic can have? Real solutions? Three. What's the lowest number? One. One. Right. To say it has zero means it's going to miss the axis. Odd polynomials never miss the axis. Never. Even ones can, because they're more like a U shape or, or a W shape. It's kind of like a U shape. But odd never misses it. So you could have three, you could have one, um, you could have two if you had something like this. That's absolutely a cubic. So we're either going to get one, two, or three. Um, yep, just sign up for me. Let's grab it and see what we got. Okay, X cubed. Minus 5x squared plus 6x minus 1. Graph. Okay, so let's answer that question. Um, how many solutions? Sometimes you got to zoom in or out to see it. I don't think you need to zoom in or out to see anything there. Um, how many solutions does this one have? Yep. Three. Yep. It's got exactly three. Did they ask for the solutions? Not yet. They just said how many. Now they're going to ask for one of them. So is it like however many times it hits like the x axis? Right. When you're solving for a root, that's basically, this is, remember, this side is like the x value, this side is like the y value. Mm -hmm. So you're basically finding all the coordinates that have a y value of 0, which is the x intercepts. Yep. Okay, now. Um, the last thing says find the middle root. Okay, by the middle, I mean the one that's not the left or the right one, the one in the middle. All right, so one more time. Uh, what are my steps to calculate the root? Second calc. Second calc, yep. And then option two. We never use option one in here. I, I don't even really know what option one is. Calculate a value. Oh, I can plug in a value for x, like 1.5. Now it tells me the y value. So it's like if you plug 1.5 into the formula. We never really do that. Um, the only options we use in here are 2, 3, 4, and 5. 6 and 7, um, those are derivatives and integrals. 
that's not something you learn in pre-cal. If you take calculus, you would possibly use those. All right, so option two. Okay, and again, pick a point to the left. Pick a point to the right, and we'll do the guess. And I want to see if everyone gets exactly the same answer that I do. Okay, because everybody's left and right might be a little different. So I'm just curious to see, do we all get exactly the same thing or no? Okay, so when I did it, I got 1.5549581. So mine ends in 9581. Did everybody's end in 9581? Okay, so it seems like with the root, um, let me just kind of make like a huge thing. Let's go like way to the left. So it's way over there. Let me go way to the right. Now, I basically trapped everything I can see on the screen in those dotted lines. So I don't know what's actually going to happen here. Let me put my guess pretty close. And I still got the same thing. So it seems like when you're finding a root, no matter where you put the left and the right bound, you're going to get the same answer. Any questions on that? All right. So those problems are the, the homework tonight. Uh, I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to put a list of test topics. We have plenty of time. Uh, we could even talk about a few of the topics if people have questions. But let me pause the video here.